Uh, well, first of all, um, I'd like to thank uh, Dennis for putting together this uh, fantastic series of talks. Uh, I'm very grateful uh, to have been asked uh, to do the first one. Uh, you all look very young. Maybe it's the lighting. So I'm surprised any of you know who I am. You all look like 16. Uh, <laughs> good makeup <laughs> in this room. Um, uh, I, I, I think what I might do is sort of talk a, a little bit about, you know, the, the kind of sort of world um, uh, I'd like to see in terms of a, 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 a sort of a society that allows everybody uh, to be their best uh, and achieve their full potential. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. Um, I was very lucky uh, at the age of 16. I did work experience uh, at KISS FM. Um, which then led to uh, getting a job with them. I then uh, went to work uh, at, at um, uh, Sony um, uh, when Simon Cowell was there. Uh, that time he was signing the Teletubbies and Robson and Jerome. He's come a long way since then. Um, <laughs> and so from Sony, I then uh, went to MTV and then MTV Channel 4 and so on. Um, for me, I, I have to say, I was very lucky because I started out um, at a time, which I was telling Dennis, when television still meant something. Uh, now, not so much. You know, everything's kind of online and on YouTube and so on. Um, so it was a sort of a being in the right place at the right time um, and also being very talkative uh, and realizing that it was possible um, to be uh, able to be paid to talk. Um, so I thought, okay, that will work. Um, and that's kind of how it, it, it all began. Um, with the sort of the theme of this evening, I think one of the things I really want to explore in my talk um, is how you create a, a society that's fair and equal uh, and balanced and enables um, everyone to have a chance, a shot, at whatever it is that they want to do. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, uh, uh, a, a Ghanaian folktale. So my parents are from Ghana. And Ghanaian culture is very much steeped uh, in mythology and storytelling, and storytelling that's sort of passed down in an oral tradition. Um, Ghanaians didn't sort of like uh, reading books that much. They sort of talk a lot. Not that I'm saying we're dumb, because we're not really smart, um, but <laughs> we like to talk. Um, and so the sort of the story of Anansi the spider um, goes uh, a little bit like this. So uh, once upon a time, there was this lowly spider who uh, basically wasn't cute, didn't have any money, and wanted to get lots of girls. And so he was figuring out how could he do that? How could he go from being the bottom of the animal chain to the top? So he went to the sky god, who was the owner of all the stories in the kingdom. And he said to the sky god, I want to buy your stories. And the sky god said to him, well, why would I sell them to you when all of these great chiefs and kings have come to try and get these stories? And they've all failed. So Anansi says, no, I think I can do it. So the sky god says to him, look, well, these stories are not for sale. Uh, if you want the stories, what you're going to have to do is you are going to have to go and capture the wildest animals in the animal kingdom and bring them to me. So anyway, so without going into too much detail, he somehow manages to do all of this. He uses his brain and his wit and his cunning, and he brings all of the animals that the sky god asks for to him. And the sky god is like, oh my goodness, wow, how did you manage to do this? And so he says, okay, from this moment onwards, you will be given these stories and you will no longer be just a lowly spider, but you will now become the spider god of all stories. And so Anansi's like very happy and after that he gets all the girls in the animal kingdom and has a big mansion and he's very happy. Now, the reason why I tell this story is because there are two elements in it that meant Anansi was able to achieve what he did and to rise to the top of uh, the kingdom. The first was opportunity. So even though the sky god didn't think that Anansi could achieve it, he still gave him the same opportunity he had given the far worthier candidates anyway. And the second thing was self-belief, because Anansi believed in himself. And I truly believe when you have opportunity coupled with self-belief, 
anything is possible. And at the moment, we've never, ever had a case of a society that is truly fair and equal, where everybody has a shot. And we don't often ask ourselves enough, what are the limiting beliefs that we have about ourselves? And what are the limiting beliefs that we have about other people? And how do they play out in the way that we interact with each other on a daily basis? And the opportunities that we give each other or the opportunities we even go for um, ourselves. And the sad thing about it is, is when you look at it, is what society is robbed of as a result. Within this room, I'm sure there are so many of you who have big dreams, big dreams that you have the ability to achieve. And there may be some of you who believe it's not possible for you. The first step before anyone else will believe it is you have to believe it. Even when everything else is telling you no and everything else you see says, oh no, somebody like you can't do that. All it takes is for one person who believes they can and eventually you'll encounter someone else who believes you can too. And then that's where the magic begins. Um, in terms of advice, I really would say there are a few things that I think have helped me. And I've made a lot of mistakes in my career. So I am not in any way saying, hey, I know everything, because I don't. I've made lots of mistakes. But the good thing about the mistakes is that I've learned from them. You know, I'm not someone that tends to make the same mistake again and again. I sort of make a mistake, and, oh, OK, I'm not going to do that one again. Then I make a different mistake. Um, so I think the thing is, you have to truly have such unwavering self-belief that you almost become somewhat delusional. So that even when you're being told no and no and no and no and no, you somehow let that wash over you and then eventually get that yes. But what you also have to make sure you know is what you're going to do when you get that yes. Because a lot of the time when you don't feel it and you don't believe it, you get the opportunity and you still feel a little kind of a bit of an imposter. And everyone can read that energy. So if you have energy that says, actually, I don't belong here, or I can't do this, or whatever, people will eventually pick up on that. And then you know, the opportunity then goes away. So I think there's, when it comes to sort of achieving goals, yes, you have to have self-belief. Yes, you have to have a little bit of delusion. Um, yes, you have to um, not take no for an answer. But then you also have to be flexible because also you also sometimes have to be realistic in that is what you want to do necessarily right for you and do you have the talent and the ability to do it. And if it's not happening in the way you want, maybe there's something else that's also staring at you that's glaringly obvious that you've never given a shot to. Or maybe you take a detour to get back to wherever it is that you want to go. I think one of the things that I've learned along the way is um, politeness um, and kindness goes a long way. And the people you meet at the bottom, you know, on your way up, the ones that <laughs> you meet on your way down, and usually they're on their way up when you're on your way down. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so it really helps to be nice and, um, and mindful to everyone you encounter because we're all human beings. We're all human beings on this journey uh, trying to live a happy, um, balanced life. So I just think never, ever forget to say thank you when somebody does something nice for you because that goes a long way. And also never forget to also try and help someone else because you never know when you're going to need that person. And you, it's not that you help just because you want something back, but it is, you know, life is cyclical and, you know, things go round. And when you are someone that's just a taker, eventually you stop, people stop giving to you. So if you really want sort of a balanced flow, you know, give as much as you take. And actually, sometimes it's better to give um, more than you take. I, I left uh, this country eight and a half years ago, and I moved to America. Um, and I'm so glad I did it for a number of reasons. One, um, I sort of, I think it gave me a real extra uh, confidence boost uh, in terms of um, that US can-do approach, because, you know, the, the, I founded a women's conference over there. 
and uh, my business partner and I had no experience in, in this arena whatsoever. But yet, Ariana Huffington, Donna Karen, uh, and Sarah Brown all gave us a chance and got behind our conference. And in five years, we've become the market leader uh, in the US. Uh, we're here, uh, and we recently launched in Africa too. And part of the reason that was possible was because of that US can-do approach. I don't think we would have had the same level of support here as two girls with no experience in that arena. I mean, we were both very well connected because of our jobs, but we had never put on a big event um, of that sort of magnitude uh, before. So I think what America did for me was it gave me uh, an extra layer of confidence that I needed. Um, it also allowed me to look at the UK as just one territory. So this is not the be all and end all. There is a whole world out there, a whole world with lots of opportunities. So traveling is so important. Um, but at the same time, I do think that we are so lucky to have been born uh, in this country because America has so many other problems um, that you see in the news all the time that we don't have to deal with in the same way. Um, and so I think sometimes it's a mistake to see it as a sort of the holy grail because it's not. It has lots of things that we can take from that are good, but I think we actually have the starting uh, base here uh, to achieve amazing things. Um, I'm so excited by your generation. You know, when I speak to young people, um, I just um, am blown away um, by the sort of confidence that you guys have. Confidence that I definitely didn't have, you know, at your age. Um, so what I will say is whatever it is you want to do, it is possible. Uh, it might not be easy, because that's the other thing, you know, without sort of sounding like a sort of nagging old woman, but you guys kind of want everything now, and life doesn't happen now. Life can sometimes be a 10, 15-year journey, um, and it's what you learn in that journey that actually makes the success itself much more enjoyable when you get there, and also means that the success is likely to last, because if it happens too quickly, you don't necessarily know how you got there. So it's very hard to know how to stay there when you don't even know how you really got there. Um, so that's kind of what I would say on this one. Um, I think uh, it's, it's all about being authentic and true to yourself um, and also never being scared to ask and not seeing no as the worst word in the world because no is something you're going to hear all the time. Really sort of somehow make yourself immune to rejection because rejection will come again and again, but if you can somehow build up a protection for yourself so that it doesn't dent how you see yourself, um, you'll eventually be in a position where you're able to accept more and more people uh, who've gone on the same journey. So uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, I look forward to chatting more. Um, and, and happy to answer uh, any questions that any of you may have. Thank you.